blend of sun and clouds today. High 57, cloudy for tonight and into tomorrow. Low tonight 45, high tomorrow at 50. Periods of rain by Sunday, the high 49. Clouds and breaks of sun on Monday, the high near 42. Tuesday, cloudy skies and the high at 45. Could get some rain by Wednesday, the high 44. Looking ahead to Thursday, low clouds, high 52. We'll be live in approximately one minute. News Talk 1480 WHBC. With Vex, keep listening to fight out. All of us have to come together to fight this enemy. Because the news never stops, and neither do we. The virus is raging throughout the state of Ohio. 1480 WHBC and WHBC.com. I'm Liz Clayman, and this is the Fox Business Report. Global stocks are under pressure after the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury conflicted over extending programs to prop up the economy. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin has declined to extend emergency loan programs set up by the Fed. They're to expire at the end of the year. The Fed issued a statement disagreeing with the decision. Reuters is reporting the European Union could pay more than $10 billion to buy doses of COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer and BioNTech and Germany's CureVac. Pfizer shares are higher. An antitrust probe of Facebook in the U.S. is believed to be in the final stages, with a filing possible in early December. Yeah, Both the Federal Trade Commission and a bipartisan group of attorneys general are investigating the companies. There could be as many as 41 states signing on to the law. Ten seconds, by for open That's rights, please. It'll be a 15 seconds. I'm Jimmy Cozzola, invested in you. <clears throat> family physician, Dr. Stan Anderson. When we talk to you, we're always live on Facebook, and we did get a question from Facebook. Once this vaccine is available, this could be the end of the pandemic. It looks promising. Get the fact. WHBC.com. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course our socially distant technical producer, JD DeAngelis. Joining Brad and me this morning. Our, our guest, special guest, Carrie Samalenko. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Community education, community educator, Mercy Medical Home Healthcare, and Darlene King, field administrator, Mercy Medical Home Healthcare. Good morning, ladies, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, home care encompasses a spectrum of healthcare and social services that are delivered in the comfort and privacy of one's own home. And those could be nursing, therapy, and social services. So home care is quickly becoming the central focus of delivering health care, whether a patient has a new illness or injury requiring a short-term skilled care, or the patient has a chronic condition requiring skilled intermittent care in the home. The home is almost always the patient's preferred location to receive care. The industry continues to demonstrate that home is the most ex is the most cost effective place to deliver care. This morning we're going to learn more about home care as we talk with Carrie and Darlene, and we'd like to remind our listeners that our programs are available on our podcast. So you can go to the App Store in your favorite smartphone and subscribe to our podcast by looking for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and we invite you to enjoy our programs wherever you go. So, Carrie, introduce yourself, please, and tell us what you do at Mercy Medical Center. I'm Carrie Samalenko, and I am the community educator for Mercy Medical Home Health Care. Um, my job description, I do the marketing um, for our home health care. Um, I market to doctors. I market to skilled nursing facilities. I market to assisted livings, independent livings, LTACs other hospitals and the community to tell them what we're able to do and what we're able to provide for them to help them along this route of aging parents or family members that might need help. It's a, it's a difficult thing to navigate if you've not done it before. Um, so I'm, I'm available to uh, kind of guide people through um, the home health care process. And Darlene, how about introducing yourself and tell us what you do at Mercy Medical Center? 
Yeah, I'm Darlene King. I'm the field administrator uh, with Mercy Home Care. Actually, I'm a 30-year veteran at Mercy. Um, Jeez, start, started my career uh, back in 1990 as a floor nurse. Um, currently, I manage um, pretty much all aspects of the home care business, clinical, financial, and quality aspects of the home care. Do, do, do most insurances cover home care? Most uh, do, yes. Medicare and all those Medicare. guys? Medicare covers 100%, so that's a no-brainer. Okay. So so how about we get a definition of, of home care, home health care? What, what all can we do we do? Well, basically, the definition of home care is the provision of medical services in the patient's home. Um, the patient's home can be defined as their physical residence, um, if they are living in an assisted living facility, um, you know, that would be considered their residence at that time. Um, they might be staying with a family member for a short period of time so we can go to their family member's home and provide the care for them. Um, but it's just the provision of any kind of medical services in the home from skilled nursing services, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Uh, we have home health aides that go into the homes. Um, those have to go along with another skilled service. Um, and we also have uh, medical social workers that go into the home to assist patients. So what's the criteria to be eligible for home care? Um, what we require for Mercy Home Health Care is, is they have to be over 18. Uh, so they have to be an adult. Um, they have to have a skilled need that is identified by a doctor or nurse practitioner. Um, we have to have a physician's order for that discipline of home health care. They have to have seen their doctor within the last 90 days. And that doctor or another doctor has to be willing to follow for home health care, which means they have to be willing to sign our orders. Um, when our, our nurse goes out or our therapist, they create the care plan and the doctor signs our orders along the way. So they're in the loop and give us technically the plan of care for this particular patient. So are there physicians that make home visits? Um, it, certain groups do, um, but when we are seeing them for home health care, we typically go back to their primary care physician and ask them, when I say follow, I'm asking them to sign our orders and follow the care plan in the home. They're, it doesn't mean that they're going to the home to see the patient, um, but we're hoping that they have seen the patient. They must have seen the patient within the last 90 days, either at their office or doing um, a, a telephonic two-way visit with that particular patient. That will satisfy the face-to-face -face requirement uh, that CMS um, requires. Okay. So home looks a little different to everyone from apartments to single family residences to living with adult children. Where can you provide care? We can go to any of those places. We can provide care wherever the patient lives. I think it would be easier to say the places that we don't go are the skilled nursing homes because they're under the care of the skilled nursing home, um, whether it's long-term care or they're there for a rehab stay. But we can go to assisted livings and independent livings. Um, and a lot of people are very, um, sometimes they're hesitant to allow us out, even though we are able to help them. Um, we've had some some people that might that might be hoarders or you know maybe they've been in the hospital for a long time and, and their house isn't as tidy as they'd like it to be. And I think uh, Darlene can attest to the fact that we've seen just about everything. Um, we're there to help for them. Um, we're not there to judge. So how do you handle a situation like that where you can barely get through the building, through the home, through the house? Darlene, I'll let well, you. Uh... At, that, at that point, <laughs> at that point, we try to just get the patient as safe as we possibly can. You know, some people want help and just don't know how to do it, don't know how to get it, don't can't physically do it, can't physically move things. Um, so we, you know, we try to assist those patients, get social work involved, pull in some community resources, you know, to help them get to a safer situation within their own home. Some of them have lived that way their entire life. Their entire childhood was that way. This is their normal. They don't want to change. So at that point, again, we try to get them as safe as we can. We try to get pathways that are clear for them. 
um, to avoid some potential fall risks and just, you know, educate them as much as we can on, uh, for whatever reason we happen to be in there and, um, you know, assist them within what they're willing to allow us uh, to help. So at the beginning of the program, we talked on some generalities, but how about you go through the services that you offer through home care? We have home health care skilled nursing, physical therapy, we offer occupational therapy, speech therapy, medical social worker, and home health aid for bathing. Um, and I think I'm going to have Dar break out on those a little bit in, in a couple of questions here. But um, all of those are available, again, with a doctor's order or a nurse practitioner's order. So how do you reassure someone who might be a little anxious about receiving care in their home? Uh, we we see that a lot, especially now with with COVID. Um, they they might be fearful to let other people in their home just because they are so concerned. Um, our team is wearing full PPE um, when they go into the home um, because of COVID right now. Um, and if they're if they're hesitant, you know, our goal is to keep them in the home as long as we can safely, of course. And we're trying to help them. And if we can get them to realize that, you know, they might be able to stay in their home a little bit longer. Um, you know, we might be able to get some additional resources for them uh, through our medical social worker um, for them to allow them to stay. And, um, you know, families, sometimes people don't have families close by, they might be out of state. Um, we can be the eyes and ears for the doctor who can't necessarily get out there to see exactly what is going on. And I know Paul, we had spoken earlier about, you know, the holidays um, that, that people tend to be depressed around the holidays and, and we've got COVID to add on to that. Um, but again, we can be the eyes and ears and, and see exactly what's going on and, and report that back to the doctor. Crazy thing about the seasonal stuff is that the younger folks too are depressed, which not not seen that really before, except in you know in a few cases. But it's just, gee, we really want to go to grandma's house, you know, but we can't go to grandma's house, and you know, we want to get together and da 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 and all that sort of thing. So it's just, I don't know, it's 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 really an unusual time. It is. So. Uh, what about the family? Uh, how do you work with the family to, to help care for the patient when, when home care gets involved? Well, we really involve the families um, from the get-go. You know, they're kind of the crux of it. home care is not, we don't spend hours on end with the patient. You know, we're in there for a half hour or an hour at a time um, for each service that we provide. Um, you know, sometimes it might be once a week or a couple times a week. So, you know, those families are there with the patient 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So um, we involve them in the education that we provide. Um, we teach them a lot of times some of the services, like maybe we're going in for wound care, you know, we teach the families how to do that. Um, so that then the nurse goes in once a week or twice a week to monitor that progress of how things are going. Um, you know, we educate both the patient and the, and the families about what the medications are for and, and why they're taking them and how to take them um, and uh, educate them on what the patient is supposed to do while we're not there from a therapy standpoint. You know, the, the basis of therapy is not just when the therapist is there, you're going to do X, Y, Z, you know, in order to get better, they have to participate when the therapist isn't there on the off days, they still need to do their exercises. So we, you know, educate the families to encourage and, and oftentimes leave um, like home exercise programs with the patients um, so that the families know what they're supposed to do um, and how many times a day they're supposed to do each exercise while the therapist aren't there. So we absolutely get the, the patients and the families involved. And oftentimes, you know, communicating with family members that are out of town, uh, picking up the phone and, and calling the daughter that lives in Florida and giving her an update on what's going on with mom, that kind of thing. So very involved with the families as well as the patients. 
and, and if I may inter interject sure. here, uh, you know, trying to help the patients realize um, that they are an important part of their care as well, that they need to own up to the situation that they're in and, and help them help them help themselves. Um, and, and, you know, going back to, uh, you know, we had mentioned in the introduction, skilled intermittent care. Um, that's kind of what Darlene touched on. That is the service that we provide because we're, we're in, we're out. We're not there mm -hmm. 24 hours a day with the family members. It's the skilled intermittent care. Um, and that's what Medicare A pays for 100% mm -hmm. and many of the um, replacements as well. Okay, first break is here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Mercy Medical Center wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for staff care, urgent care, seven days a week, and Mercy Primary Care Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be used by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer. Computer. Our Mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you. So, whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one -on -one with a Mercy primary care physician, Mercy is here for you. Mercy Medical Center telehealth appointments. Learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. That's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth. Online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance copays and deductibles apply. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops, and maybe a humidifier. And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville is making your Christmas better than ever. Hundreds of lighted seasonal pictures to celebrate Christmas and all occasions. They are inexpensive. Lots of tree and seasonal ornaments, wreaths, trees, and much, much more. Our huge buyout of lighted pictures and our great display of them will make your Christmas season. The Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now, here's your host, Paul White. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are discussing Mercy's Home Health Care with Carrie and Darlene from Mercy Medical Center. I think I had one more question um, or two. But what does it mean for a patient to be homebound? Homebound, uh, homebound doesn't mean a patient can never leave their home. Uh, what homebound means is that it's, it's difficult for that patient to get out of their home. Um, Medicare definition is a considerable and taxing effort to leave. Um, that patient may need a walker or a cane or the assistance of another person just to get out of their house and to get into their car to go anywhere. Um, you know, they might get out and go to the doctor, but when they get back, they're exhausted. They have to take a nap for the next two, three hours just to catch up. Um, 
So that that's basically what it means. I mean, the patients can go, um, they can go to church, they can go get their hair cut. Um, obviously, they can go to the doctor. Um, those type of things do not make them not homebound. Um, we have had a very rare occasion where patients have went on a small trip. Um, their families, you know, maybe it's a getting close to an end of life issue and, you know, something they've really wanted to do. The family goes out of their way. They, they, they get a handicap accessible vehicle to get them where they want to go. Um, you know, they have a wheelchair, you know, when, when they get to their destination, you know, maybe say it's a beach house, they sit in the house with the family around them, basically doing the same thing that they would have done when they were home but it's just kind of a, you know, an all in effort to be able to do something really special when, when someone might be getting towards an end of life issue. But primarily the patients, you know, they, they're home the majority of the time. Um, you know, it is difficult for them to get out. Um, occasionally we have patients that can drive. Um, if there is no other means for that patient, they have absolutely no one. They would not get to the doctor. They wouldn't get to get food. They wouldn't get to the pharmacy to get their medications. Um, but again, it's difficult, you know, might take them a half hour just to get to the car and get in and get ready to leave. Um, you know, so on occasion, we do have patients that can drive for those necessity type purposes. Um, you know, in this day and age, most people can get groceries delivered and can get medications delivered. So a lot of them, it's just getting to that doctor's appointment. Again, with uh, our, our new situation in COVID where even that can happen um, telephonically, uh, the physician's appointment. So the, the need for that um, is much less than it has been in past years. But that is, you know, that's basically what homebound means. It doesn't mean they can never go anywhere. It just means it's really mm -hmm. difficult for them to do so. So, so who provides the transportation? You, you normally don't do that, correct? We do not provide transportation. Um, there are some companies out there that will provide non-medical transportation if a patient can get into the vehicle on their mm -hmm. own. Um, if they need someone to help them get in and out of a handicap accessible vehicle, then um, that would most likely be an ambulance trip or an ambulette trip. Uh, um, what about um, uh, Medicare? Do they pay for skilled home health care? Medicare pays 100% for skilled home health care. A lot of the Medicare replacements do as well. Um, some of the commercial insurances may have co-pays or deductibles, but what we always do, um, if we get a referral for home health care, we're gonna verify their insurance first thing. We certainly don't want anyone to have any surprises. Uh, we're going to run it, uh, see if they have a copay, see if they have a deductible, co-insurance, um, and let them know so that they can make um, a good decision, uh, a sound financial decision um, as to whether or not they want to proceed. What about financial limits on home care from like Medicare? Is there such a thing? Well, um, Medicare typically right now um, with the new regs, they're, they approve for a month at a time, a month block. Um, when our team goes out, they're going to assess, make sure there is a skilled need, and then there are checks and balances along the entire way. So if they uh, say two weeks in, they meet their goals or meet their max potential, then we discharge, we can discharge from that particular discipline or from services. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, if they haven't met their goals by the end of the, the 30 day period, uh, we can ask for a recertification of care. Um, but again, it, we're checking along the way the entire time um, to make sure that the, the patients are, um, you know, getting what they need and, and see if they need something else. And unlike a nursing home, if, if someone, if we discharge them from our care this week, a month from now, they get um, COVID or uh, pneumonia and they need home health care again, there isn't a maximum amount number of days that Medicare gives us like they do with the nursing home. There just has to be a skilled need and a change in their condition. Okay. Time for the news, ladies. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy.
You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. WHBC Newsroom. There are now five Ohio counties who have issued their own health advisories. Summit County yesterday issued a stay-at-home advisory, joining Franklin, Cuyahoga, Hamilton, and Medina. So far, Star County's health departments have decided not to take that path. Meanwhile, Franklin County is the first county in Ohio that is purple on the color-coded coronavirus map, and that is as bad as it gets. That's part of what led to the Ohio High School Football State Championships being moved to Maslin from Columbus. Of course, the Maslin Tigers going after a state title. They'll do it at home tonight. 6.15 is the kickoff. Our All Care Stadium show starts at 5 o'clock right here on 1480 WHBC. And also, you can hear it on Mix 94.1. Well, if you're one of the people who still hasn't received their $1,200 federal stimulus check, you're running out of time. While most people received checks back in April, some were never issued a payment. The deadline for filing a request is tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Those who missed the deadline can get a stimulus credit for next year. A reward is being offered for information that leads to the arrest and conviction in the shooting death of a Jackson Township man on Monday. The Star County Crime Stoppers made that announcement yesterday. 28-year-old Charles Isles III was found dead at an apartment building on South Boulevard Northwest. The cost of a full Thanksgiving dinner, including dessert for 10 people, checks in at $46.90 this year. That's the price for a traditional meal for 10 people, including the turkey. It's 4% cheaper than it was last year. More news coming up at 10 o'clock. I'm Pam Cook. Mercy Medical Center wants you to know we are here for you literally and virtually. For our patient safety, Mercy is providing virtual doctor appointments from the comfort of your home. This service is available for staff care, urgent care, seven days a week. And Mercy Primary Care, Monday through Friday. See our website at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth for office and appointment hours. Mercy Telehealth visits are simple, convenient, and can be used by anyone who has access to a smartphone, tablet, or computer our mercy representatives are ready and happy to assist you so whether you are in need of urgent care for minor illnesses and injuries or would like a one-on-one with a mercy primary care physician mercy is here for you mercy medical center telehealth appointments learn more at cantonmercy.org slash telehealth that's cantonmercy.org slash telehealth online appointments are considered medical services and will be billed to your insurance co-pays and deductibles apply Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult times, please stay calm and make sure your medical and health care supplies are well stocked. Have Kleenex, pain relievers, fever reducers such as Tylenol and cough syrup like Robitussin, Dayquil, cough drops and maybe a humidifier. And make sure you take a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins. Also, you might get a good probiotic and make sure that you get plenty of rest and plenty of nutritious food. The Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. It's a winter wonderland at Studio Arts and Glass. Our annual holiday open house now through Thanksgiving. Take 20% off your entire order. Hand-blown glass ornaments, your Santas, jewelry, come make a wreath or a glass snowflake. 20% off your entire order. See our extended holiday hours at studioartsandglass.com. Shop local this holiday season. Yes, we are open. We are open. The Medicine Center Pharmacies and the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville are open. Some great services are still in play. Our drive through windows, curb service, and our enhanced delivery service. Our stores are fully inventoried and fully staffed for your convenience. 13 pharmacists to help you with your medications and over-the-counter products. So don't hesitate to visit us or use one of our services. Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, New Philadelphia, and Minerva. 
Your severe weather station, News Talk 1480 WHC. Here's your active weather forecast. Breezy, mild weather continuing for the rest of the day with a blend of sun and clouds. High this afternoon, 57, and mainly cloudy tonight, low 45. Saturday will be cloudy, high tomorrow, 50. Then periods of rain on Sunday with a high of 49, and rain continuing through late Sunday night. Clouds breaking for some sunshine Monday, high 42. I'm Holly Holdren for News Talk 1480 WHBC. Holly Holdren, huh? <laughs> You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. This morning we are speaking with Carrie Samalenko and Darlene. <laughs> Simple last name. King. Uh, King. And... Um, we're we're talking about I think a critical um, aspect of healthcare. There's a lot of people that need and get home health care. So let's get back to the show. So, ladies, why don't you tell us what your service area looks like for our listeners? Um, you know, it's something I think when you mention home care, I think it's something that you know is out there, and you don't think a lot about it till you need it, and then you're like, where do I find it? So, sure. Um, so we service all of Stark County. Um, and then we also touch on pretty much all the counties that butt up against Stark County. Um, we travel as far north as like Uniontown and Green. Um, our eastern borders, um, about the farthest out we go there are the Sebring and Beloit area. We go as far south as Dover, New Philly. And then our western border is the Orville and Dalton area. So we have, you know, pro a little more than a 30 mile radius from the, from the center hub, so to speak. Um, our office is here in, in Canton. Um, but like I said, we, we do all of the Stark County area. We have a quite a bit of patients in the Carrollton area. Um, Alliance, we see a, a pretty large population in Alliance, uh, Maslin area. Yeah, we, we have a pretty large footprint. Do you have any specialty pro specialty programs that you cater to? Absolutely, we do. Um, you know, it, it will I'll have Darlene break out in a little bit on you know each discipline and, and what they can do. Uh, but one of our specialty programs that we have right now is our is our cardiac rehab at home program um, designed for people that have been in had some sort of heart procedure. Um, go home from the hospital um, and there in the past there's been this gap between hospital and the outpatient cardiac rehab care. Um, I've been through this with my my stepdad recently um, so it, it's important as soon as they get home that they have that therapy in place you know to get them up and get them moving um, you know with this particular program we're we're focusing on um, trying to get them up to 45 minutes of continuous exercise while being supervised, of course, by our clinicians. Um, we're focusing on diet. Um, we're focusing on stress relief, which are two things that typically aren't um, customarily looked at with home health care. Um, my mom, bless her heart, she thought a low sodium diet just meant not picking up the salt shaker and adding salt. So she was giving my stepdad um, canned soup um, which I, I don't have anything against canned soup, but it's very high in sodium. Salt, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the whole learning curve um, to, to teach, um, you know, not only the patient, but the family, what what is uh, what is low sodium, what isn't low sodium. Darlene, do you have any other, um, anything you want to add as far as our cardiac rehab at home program? I think you pretty much covered, uh, you know, what we're doing with the cardiac rehab. They don't just have physical therapy, though, with that program. A lot of those patients also have the nursing component of that um, to continue the, you know, kind of the medical side of the education part. The therapist, you, you know, they do touch on the diet and that as well. But, um, you know, getting more into the medications and making sure there's compliance with those medications and um, any follow up that way with the physician. 
As a kid, I remember. Say. I remember when they took the salt shaker away from my grandmother, and I <laughs> and I, I I thought the world was going to end because she was a cardiac patient, had a heart heart issue, and, I, and yeah. probably probably was eight to ten years old or something like that. I can still see that picture <laughs> taking the salt shaker away from her. So, and I vividly remember the no salt. Oh yeah. That's oh, oh, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Now, thank <laughs> yeah. goodness there's a lot of uh, alternatives to salt and with other seasonings now that we educate our patients on, and they actually taste halfway decent. Hmm. I would guess your cardiac at home program has been even more popular during COVID as there's been maybe limited access to physical therapy facilities um, for actual movement. Do you have physical therapists work with that program too, or is that strictly a transition program until they can get on site to do some cardi some physical cardiac rehab? Yes. The the physical therapists kind of drive the the, uh, cardiac rehab at home program. Um, so that, that is a big piece of it. Um, so they are getting up and getting moving. And like Carrie mentioned, that getting that working up to that 45 minutes of continuous supervised exercise in the home setting so that when they are able to get out um, to do the outpatient uh, program, you know, they're, they're ready for that. They're kind of prepared for that. I always kind so of, I, I always kind of thought on this physical therapy thing that that it was worked better was more comfortable I don't know when you're in a group of people in a facility other than your home is that true or false well here's here's the issue if, if the patient is homebound they can't get out to go for to sure, yeah for sure yeah. go for outpatient therapy and typically with Medicare, um, if they're going for that outpatient therapy, once they aren't homebound, then they typically have a 20% copay um, to go along with that. But our therapists have a lot of tricks up their sleeves um, that they can make exercising fun um, and make sure that they're getting the help that they need and the therapy that they need in the home um, because these patients are homebound and they can't get out. So we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we're, we're getting them where they need to be. Okay. And it's kind of, it's more, it's a, a kind of a safer situation. I don't want to say safer situation, more realistic situation when the patient's in their own home and you, know, you can practice on a set of um, fake stairs at a therapy facility, but yeah. your stairs at home may be a lot steeper. Or they may be a lot narrower or um, the therapist can look and say, you know, well, we need to get, you know, we need to get a contractor out here to get some, some railings put up and that kind of thing. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a little, um, you know, it's a home safety assessment as well with those patients. And again, it's, it's, it's real to what they're going to be navigating in their own home, back to those boarding so, situations and, you know, that. So type. what you're saying is, is you do a home assessment of like, we need this, we need that, you know, the bathtub, uh, we need, we need bars and the hand, stuff like that. Is, is, is that safe they to can, say? They can absolutely make recommendations like that. Yes. Our therapists are, when they go in the home, they're looking for things that are going to make the patient's lives easier. So -hmm. if they feel like they're going to need a a grab bar in the bathroom to make them safe and make their life easier, they're going to do it. If they see a throw rug that's on the floor, that's a potential trip hazard, they're going to recommend that they remove that rug um, because it is a trip hazard for them. Sure. So tell me about star ratings. How is your star rating calculated for home care? Darlene? Oh, I had that you were going to talk about that one. But oh, okay. <laughs> our star ratings um, are basically, um, there's a, a set number of quality measures that CMS um, has um, set for us to, to follow. And basically that's how our, you know, basing on what our quality outcomes are with our patients. Um, we have some documentation that we do with every single patient that's the same documentation over and over. And they're looking for, um, you know, what was the patient like when we admitted them? And then how much better were they when we discharged them? Um, so those are all measured on every patient. Um, and that's what determines our star ratings. Um, and Mercy is currently coming in at a four and a half star um, rating on that scale. So 
And that's publicly reported um, through the Medicare website. So anyone can go and look and compare agency to agency. It's kind of like the star ratings for hotels and restaurants and that. Um, but it's all based on what our quality outcomes are on our uh, patients that we've had in the past and discharged. And that's an amazing star rating, by the way. That's out of five. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I don't think our listeners may realize that not only are you at home care graded on a five star scale, but so are we at the pharmacy and so are your providers at the hospital and the physicians. So school doesn't end when you get out of school. We're still graded on a daily basis with everything we do. And it takes a village for all of us to work together to make CMS happy, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, since they're the largest payer. They set the rules, and sometimes it's a challenge to meet those rules, but hopefully yes. patient outcomes are better for it. So, all right. How about, um, how about give us some examples of when a person might need home health care? How about that? Um, you know, I like to see um, if someone's discharging from the hospital, they probably are a candidate uh, for home health care. They're discharging from a nursing home back to home. Um, that should be looked at. Um, if they have an illness with a setback, it, it, they don't have to have been in the hospital or at a skilled nursing home to get home care. So if they go to their doctor and, and they're, they're ill, um, they've had some sort of a setback, that doctor can write the script for home health care. So you don't have to have, actually we'd prefer that they not wait until they have that fall or end up in the hospital. Um, and I encourage all the doctors in the community, our, our Mercy Procore doctors are amazing at recognizing, hey, you know, I think you could benefit from having home health care. Um, you know, you have a new assistive device, whether it's, uh, you know, a walker or a cane or a wheelchair, you know, therapy can teach you how to use it, how to transfer if you're in a wheelchair, things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't, we'd like for people to not wait until it's, you know, hospital or an ER visit. And mm -hmm. that way, you know, we can get out there to help them if they've had ortho surgery <laughs> and are going home, they're going to need us. Okay. Um, our final breaks here. You listen to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. Take a trip to the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville and see Christmas Wonderland. We've created a tunnel full of lighted Christmas and all-occasion pictures, plus we have tons of decor and lots and lots of wreaths and trees. Check out our toy aisles. We have a lot of inexpensive toys for your kids. Our watch cases are loaded, so head to the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. In these difficult days, please stay calm and make sure your medical and healthcare supplies are well stocked. Make sure you have Kleenex, acetaminophen or Tylenol, ibuprofen or Advil, Mucinex, Robitussin or Dayquil, cough drops, maybe even a humidifier or a vaporizer. You can also just turn the shower on hot and sit in the bathroom breathing in the steam. How about vitamin D and a probiotic? And a good multivitamin like Linus Pauling Super Multivitamins that you'll find only in the medicine center pharmacies. So take care of yourselves and don't stress about the coronavirus. Make sure you get plenty of rest and plenty of healthy food. Medicine Center Pharmacy, Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. 
Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC and Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Now here's your host, Paul White. We're in the final segment of our show this morning. We're talking to Carrie Samalenko and Darlene King from Mercy Medical Center about home care. So what red flags should family members watch for to recognize the need for more help? Um, if your relative or someone is having falls in the home, that's a, that's a huge red flag for us. If they've had a recent hospitalization, new medications that they maybe don't understand, or a new diagnosis of a chronic condition like CHF, COPD, diabetes that they need um, some teaching on. I'm sure that the coronavirus has really changed home care. Um, and years ago, we used to work with with another home agency. Um, and I can't even imagine what the inter, in, interjection of, of something like this is. I mean, how do you s- train your staff and school them and keep them safe and just the whole the whole deal? It's it's almost like there's more time needed for training on how to save yourself or to take care of yourself than there is for the patient. Is that fairly accurate or am I too far out? Well, we have done a lot of education with the staff on um, proper use of PPE. You know, we've always used gloves in the past and, you know, masks are kind of a new thing for us. Usually surgical masks were used in surgery. Um, But we, you know, all of our staff at the very beginning, there was a shortage nationwide on, you know, the personal protective equipment. Luckily, we were able to keep ahead of that. um, And we never, we never ran out of of the PPE supplies that we needed. Our our staff wear a surgical mask for every single visit. Uh, We currently wear gloves and either goggles or face shield for every visit um, because you just never know whether you're going into a home where a patient's got COVID or whether there's a family member that has COVID or they've been exposed and don't know it. Um, so not only are we protecting our staff from, you know, what we may be walking into, but we're also protecting the, our patients, you know, from any potential exposure, you know, you could go to the grocery store and be exposed. Um, so, you know, we're, we're protecting both our patients from any uh, potential exposure and, and our clinicians as well. Um, we are working very hard to get all of our staff um, fit tested for elastomeric masks um, that they can wear for any visit. Um, we have fit tested a handful of, of our clinicians for the N95 masks so that if we are going into a known COVID patient, um, they can wear that as well as uh, wearing a, a gown and shoe covers and, and the, entire, um, hmm. the entire PPE series. Um, so like I said, we, you know, we keep a very close eye on our PPE stock and make sure that we are uh, well ahead of the game with that. You know, it's definitely been a, a learning curve for all of our staff, but everybody's been really great about it and adjusting to it. Um, and it was also kind of a learning curve for the patients in the beginning. You know, why are, why is everybody coming in into my house? You know, I, I don't have COVID. Why is everybody coming in with the gloves on and the mask on? And, you know, so it was yeah. education to them as well, just to let them know, you know, this is kind of an unknown here. We're, we're trying to do our best to protect everybody involved. So it's definitely been an, a new thing to navigate and, and, and a bit scary, but uh, everybody's been getting through it. CMS did change something for us on our end because of COVID, which has made it a little easier for us um, before um, the doctor had to order home health care. Because of the doctors being overwhelmed right now, they're allowing the nurse practitioners, PAs, and uh, CNS to order, follow, and sign for home health care. So that helps us 
immensely and it also empowers these other clinicians in the doctor's office to um, order home health care for these patients that might need it and oversee the care as well. You know, our pharmacies, the medicine center pharmacies offer free home delivery and specialized packaging um, for homebound people. And there's a lot of individuals who are, who are currently using that, uh, even though they're mobile. Okay. So what services do you find your home care patients need most? Well, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, Paul, because, you know, the number one reason that patients readmit to the hospital when they've discharged from the hospital or a skilled setting is because they either don't have or don't understand their medications. When they were discharging from the skilled nursing home, they may have told the uh, social worker there, yeah, I've got that one at home, but it may be a completely different dose um, a, a, or even a different script. Um, so the first thing that my nurse is going to do when she goes out is she's gonna do a med reconciliation, uh, make sure that they have the medications that they need, make sure that they understand how to take them. And most, um, patients, most patients come out with a garbage bag full or a grocery bag full of uh, multiple pills and mm -hmm. doses and expired medications. And um, yeah, so it's, it's quite, a, um, quite a process sometimes to go through all those medications mm -hmm. and make sure that they do have what they need and they don't have uh, taking, for instance, you know, the brand name and the generic of the same thing and not realizing it's... Yeah. it's it's two different bottles, but it's the exact same medication. So yeah, yeah there's definitely a lot of um, a lot of education around the medications and med reconciliation is a big part of what we do. And I know a lot of our patients do utilize your service mm. and it is, it's very helpful for those patients that are, are confused about their medications. It can make things much easier for them. You know, I, I take a few meds myself and, and I find it, um, I find it difficult when, when you get to maybe three or more medications and particularly if, if they're not um, uh, all like the same dosage, like one mm -hmm. tablet once a day. Uh, let's say you throw in something like you take a, a, a med every other day into your mix with your daily. That's when it gets complicated unless you either have a pill box or a pill, pill packaging system like we mm -hmm. have. Um, I honestly can say that, that on maybe one occasion, I forgot to take the second day one, you know, so, so what do you do? Um, you go to sophisticated packaging, we don't charge for it. So, um, we'd hope that if you find a situation where they're overloaded with meds, um, we're not looking for necessarily to endorse us, but we can help. Um, and we've helped a lot of people and we, we are our robotics package the meds so yeah Turned absolutely out. I, I know a lot of our patients do utilize your service and it's it's been very helpful for them so so what about referrals do all your referrals come from a doctor or would... um they come from the skilled nursing homes um hospitals doctors offices um a, a lot of times i'll have um family members call in and say, you know what, uh, you know, uh, my husband, he, he got out of the hospital two weeks ago and maybe they declined home health care at that time. He needs some help. Um, I simply get the name of their primary care physician and, and get on the phone and call and, and see if they're willing to give us that referral, see if that patient does have a skilled need. Um, and, and it's as easy as that. All the, uh, so in the spirit the, of referrals, how about you, can you give your phone number for your home health agency office there? Yes, it is. Uh, oh my gosh, I just lost it, Darlene. <laughs> Our phone number is 234-203-3211. So 234-203-3211. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're pretty close to the end of the show here. Um, I would say you gave your phone number. Um, can a patient call you um, themselves and say, I need home care? Absolutely, they can. They can call our main number and we'll be happy to assist them with that um, and, and try to get them on the right path. What about, um, 
you mentioned that you don't necessarily have to be discharged from a hospital stay to get home care, and that's good. And, you know, often you mentioned also that um, you mentioned that um, sometimes your nurses can kind of be the watchdog for patients. And we feel like we've done that at the pharmacy at times, too, when we have a concern about a patient that comes in and maybe they're not getting around as well as they used to, or they seem a little unsteady. And it's nice to be able to kind of help refer patients to get some help, because I'm guessing... I'm guessing you've seen some patients that you've delivered home care for that didn't maybe want it, but didn't really understand that it was in their best interest. Can you speak maybe to that real briefly before we close? We see it all of the time. Um, and if we can just convince them that we're there to help, uh, we aren't there to you know, take them out of their home or, or anything like that. We're there to help them. We want them to stay at home safely. Um, and, and you know, having us in might might be the key to them being able to stay in their home longer. Very good. Okay, gang, time to close the show. It's been very enlightening and, and we enjoyed having you both on the show Thank um, you. and hearing what home care is all about. So our special guest, Carrie Samalenko, Community Educator, Mercy Medical Home Health Care, and Darlene King, Field Administrator, Mercy Medical Home Care. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank you listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center. Have a healthy week and a happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you again next Friday right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you again very Thank much. Thank you for joining very us for this edition of Health Thank Matters you. with the Medicine Thank Center you. Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacist, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy.